Oh, Thundercats. Thundercats. I watch Chip and Dale. Rescue you worked Rangers. At Chip and Dale. <laughs> <laughs> wow, not Puritan at all. Welcome to the vault. Old footage, newly edited, just for you. Welcome to Curiosity Public. I'm Dutch. Jules here. Dylan. And welcome to yet another episode of our Ultimate Spirits Competition, our quest to review every sipping spirit on the face of the planet and subject it to our crazy hard 100 point scoring system. And in this episode, we're going scotch. But we're going scotch that I think would appeal to a lot of bourbon drinkers. We're going to drink some Avalor Abuna. Yep. Abunda? Abuna Hada? Abuna Hada. I don't know how you say it. Abuna. That's how you say it. Um, uh, a very impressive presentation on this bottle. It's a huge canister. I mean, you I may like not cylinders. be able to get the scope of how big this is, but maybe here's my Glen Karen so you can kind of see just how wide this is. It is a Speyside single malt scotch cask strength. So we're at 59.8% alcohol. This is batch 67. This is a batched product. Um, this one, I think, uh, it's kind of cool. It's, it's, uh, it is matured in Oloroso Sherry. Mm. It is cask strength. It is non-chill filtered. Mm. A lot to like about that. Ooh, mm. hard to open. And the bottle is fairly stout as well. You can hear that. Um, good looking bottle. Mixture. There you see it says Abunda. Very clear. I mean, it just shows off the color of the spirit. Um, I don't know if we've got any, um, information on whether or not there's any added color to this. Um, maybe Dylan has that info. It doesn't say on the bottle itself. Um, of course, I've said that before and misread it, so I'm double checking. But, you know, Are cask there any strength. directions for opening it? <laughs> yeah, cask strength, 59.8% <laughs> alcohol, non shell filtered, a lot to like about this. I'm going to get this poured. Dylan. So, what, what do does Abuna mean? Yeah, what does it mean? What does it mean? Do you know? No idea. I don't so, do any research for the show. Yeah, so it's uh, it's Gaelic for the original. Okay. Oh. And now, this is the interesting part about this. A lot of people love this, but in the last, say, five to ten years, people were getting really upset. Why? Why? Because the price kept going up, up, up. And MSRP or yeah, market so demand? MSRP. So it used to be, you could get it like below 40. Wow. Uh, and then every other year, it was I think it was going up like tw 10 to 20 bucks. Whoa. And so now. That's big. Those are big. Now books. this is, you can probably pick this up 90 to 100 mm. plus. Mm. If you're lucky, you can get it for about 90. Mm. But because there's demand wow. for this, yeah. in some parts of the country, it'll sometimes sell out. Mm. Um, it's also in batches, so it's not like they keep yeah. coming out all the time. Mm. It's kind of like the Stag Junior of Scotch. Exactly, and <laughs> mm. people who love this go out and get it. But the problem was the price. Mm -hmm. I feel like because the demand went up, the price went up. Mm. But instead of the secondary prices, the distillery just said, "Well, Wait, we're going to take the cut." Going to raise, which it. I can't blame them for. And you know what? And people still pay. So interesting. Exactly. It is made with local them. spring water from the Ben Rins and barley, now locally sourced from the fields near, near the distillery. Um, it doesn't say whether or not there's coloring added. I mean, at cask strength, with the sherry finish, this is not an unbelievable color, is it? Yeah, that's it. You know. It's kind of dark. It's pretty dark. Maybe there is a little bit of color. We don't know. <laughs> we um, don't know. One of our fine viewers might have the answer to that, and I'm sure we'll get comments on it, but uh, let's get tasting. I'm really interested in your first aroma impression. Well, Jules is the only one that's never had this. Oh, that's true. I've, I've been sipping on this. It's, <laughs> it's funny we mentioned Stag. Yeah. Because his nose is actually kind of similar. It's it's a good it's a good analogy mm. I gotta say. So wait, what did we pay for this? What was the final? Uh, price tag? I think like eighty five, right? Ish. I think it's ninety. Okay, mm. ninety. Ninety is the the cheapest you can get, but you'll see anywhere between ninety to one hundred and ten or so. Look at that market correction there. <laughs> That's good. Oh. Yeah, you know. All right, guys, we've had some time to taste. We've all scored. We haven't revealed our scores. I think Dylan and I both caught a glimpse of Jules' ridiculous market correction score, but let's reveal it now to each other. I scored this an 84. Whoa. 
78. I gave it an 85. Oh, look at that's that. Right. That's I was right. originally at an 85, actually. Yep, that's wow. Right. I must admit, I was originally at an 80. Okay, so, I mean, well, okay, all things considered, it's not that huge of a spread. Yeah, so, yeah. let's dig in and start with aroma. I love the nose. It's a nine. 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 Look at that. For sure. Nose. Total Knocked it out. So, I, you guys can start. Um, I have a lot to say. Um, I mean, we mentioned stag. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I get that cherry cola, mm -hmm. which is so weird to get that for a scotch. Yeah. yeah. You know, but then I get all the other scotch stuff you expect to get. You get a little bit of that earthiness. Mm -hmm. You get a little bit of that uh, that barley influence. You get a little bit of that smoke. It's a it's a really good nose, and I'm kind of questioning why I didn't give it a ten. I don't know that I have a good answer. Why don't you guys talk it through? I got like a smoked honey. I think the only reason I didn't give it a ten was because there was a really there's a little bit of ethanol uh, ethanol here, yeah. and that. Yeah. You know, it was close. It, it was Actually, really close, yeah. though. Oh, yeah. yeah. Great, great aroma, right? No. Uh, you know, you get all of the stewed and really, really, really ripe fruits. A lot of the stone fruits, right? You peach. get the you know, peach and nectar. Yeah. You get the molasses. And the typical, like, sherry things, like the fig yeah. come fig. through yeah. as well. Yeah, but here's Prune. the thing. But it's brighter. Which when I yeah. first, first, first tried this, I thought I was drinking bourbon. Mm. Because when I when I when I I can see that mm. I, when I nosed it, I said, "Wait a minute, this is not this can't be a scotch." Yeah, and I yeah. did a double take. I mean, at 60 percent, that's 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 mm. high for scotch, right? And and I said, "Wait a minute, isn't this supposed to be sherry? Yeah. Why does it smell like a bourbon?" There's a bit of that fig that comes through, and it, that to me told uh, me it's sherry. Yeah, for sure. Mm. But I mean, there's so much like there's a there's that. Really, really kind of suggestive aroma mm. of something more like a first touch, you know, liquor, right? I mean, that's that's why it was uh, it was a wonder. Why isn't it perfect? I think the age mm. creates this weird, slight ethanol mm. um, kind of hit that's not that's there not perfect. You. I actually wonder if at like a, a fifty percent alcohol, if this would be a perfect nose. No, lower I personally proof? think I that if the proof. age no. shifted a little longer, I think all of this could be balanced out. Which the, might bring the proof down, yeah, seeing as it's scotch. Yeah, the I mean, thought is that they mix sorry. like anywhere between 5 to 25 years. Now, mm -hmm. I doubt there's going to be a lot of 25, 25? Yeah. and more in the younger, but you know, their, their statement is that it can be anywhere in between to create this flavor each batch. Wow. Oh, awesome nose. Let's move on, speaking of flavor, to flavor. Easy for me, it was an 18. 18. There's not a lot missing from this. 18 for sure. I give it a 16. Really? What's, Why? Yeah. What so, are the flavor components that So from the aroma, I got, I was getting a lot of the stone fruit. I was missing a lot of that in the flavor. No way. On the palate. No way. Yeah, it disappeared. Like, I was hoping for some, I was waiting for like the jam. The, the, the jammy thing, fig almost overpowers some of the other stuff, but I did get them. It. Yeah, uh, I didn't, okay. I didn't again, get it. Hang on, guys. But... This is a scotch, so we're going to come back at the right. end and taste it again. True. Let it open up. Let it open up a little so. bit. I think you might actually yeah. be tempted to go up. Be just because That's fair. I know that the flavors intensify as this opens. So we'll come back to yeah. that. Let's not spend too much time. Because it was kind of weak for me. So. Let's not spend too much time arguing, but you agreed with me, 18. I, I got a lot. I got a lot. Yeah. It's really There's some... delicious. Yeah. I mean, that's the best yeah. way I can describe it. Why is it at a 19 or a 20? Um, I think... You get some of the weird young ethanol at yeah, times. That's what I was going to say. And There's... it's not all the time, but it just kind of comes but in. not in the flavor. You I, can I get, used to get no, the, it's in the no, flavor. You, in the the, you can get the proof on the, mm. on the palate. Yeah. I get the proof, and I think that's what kept me from going up any yeah. higher. I was like, There's yeah. just a little bit too much of that proof coming. If you subtracted that, this is a 20 out of 20. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Those are the flavors I loved. Okay, well, we'll come back to that again, uh, like we said. But let's move on to the body. I thought it was really good. I give it an 8. Give it an eight. I give it an eight. Yeah, it's strong. For sure. Totally agreeing, for sure. agreeing there again. Just good. I mean, I, I like, wish it was a little bit. Yeah, it could have been a little the bit. The mouth yeah. feels great. There's oil. It, it does get a little thin. It could have coated a little bit better. A little more, yeah. But not and again, bad. nitpicking here. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Moving on. Complexity. A lot of different flavors hitting. Nine for me. Nine. I give it an eight. Again, yeah. with the components that were missing for me, a lot of the jam. I'm trying, to figure, out, I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure out why I didn't give it a ten. Yeah, why were you Flour. not? Yeah, I think that's floral. that's ultimately yeah. my. I mean, you think about conclusion. like the, the the floral components you can get from some of the glens, like the Glen Livet, Glen Morangy. 
They are not here. They're yeah. overpowered by the fruity, jammy, fig stuff. That yeah, if I were to create a Venn diagram, right, and I had like scotch flavors here and then like bourbon flavors over here. There's a big overlap. Yeah, there's an overlap here. And what happens though, when you have this, it excludes some of the flour from the scotch. And from the bourbon, you're missing some of the like the dark molasses wood the 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 caramel molasses sweetness is replaced with like a fig sweetness that's right that's what it is that's right this is this is a high proof bourbon replacing the sweet with fig sweetness yeah mm. you're right Absolutely. Um, okay moving on guys to balance um i thought for what was there it was pretty well balanced i gave it an eight i gave it a seven i gave it a seven I, and I, I could be convinced to go to an eight, but Again, I felt the like this was... the biggest component missing for me, though, was like the stone fruit jam. So. Really? I got... <laughs> yeah, I didn't... Uh, stone fruit's there. I just uh, felt like... I, I just felt, It's really weak. Yeah, for me, I it's think the really balance weak. issue comes from uh, like the varying age, maybe. Mm. And I, that's the only way I can kind of justify why you get these strange hits sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like you get this like ethanol hit mm -hmm. at times. Yeah. You, it's just like... You normally don't get that in a like a, you know, well aged mm -hmm. scotch, and so that's why the balance was at seven. That's fair. Let's move on to finish. I personally love the finish on this. I gave it a nine. Mm. I thought it was muddied. I give it a seven. I gave it a seven. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Really? It was mixed. It was really, and this is the one I debated the most on because it was like it would be medium. Sometimes it would fall to short. So it's really muddy. For me. You know what's interesting? I'm it's not even about the length. Mm. It's more of consistency. Well, no, but well, see, that's part of it. That's but... well, okay. To me, it evolved. Mm -hmm. Like I got initially, you get this bright jam hit on the palate, and that stays for the beginning of the finish, and then it changes, and you get a little bit more of the spice, and then you get a little more of the smoke. And to me, just how long that was and how it evolved. Mm. I mean, maybe for it's what amazing. you traditionally think of a finish, you might not like that. But for me, it re really worked. Mm. I really liked the evolution on the finish, and I did give it bonus points for that. Mm. All right. You guys don't agree, huh? You're going to stay with your low scores. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I think it's the, it's, I want more consistency. Mm -hmm. All right. Slightly Fair enough. More. Let's yeah. move on to drinkability. I initially had a nine. I ended up at an eight. Wait, uh, we're on uniqueness. My shut friend. up. <laughs> uniqueness, uh, nine. I have not had a lot of scotches that chase nine. this. Nine. Certainly unique. Yeah. You cannot it's, deny this, this stands out. This stands out. Let's let Jewel say a score. Well, so again, this was going off of because I was missing that jam component, which is why I knocked it. So I give it an eight. It's only a point off. Why are you because talking it about was jam? Missing you're talking you're, you're Because of the flavor, relativity. because of that uniqueness. Like, that's the one thing that's missing for me. So it's like, how can I, if it's not even that's getting to there. Flavor, man. Uh, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't uh, disassociate the two, so. I don't know, man. I, I thought this was, this is, I... You can get some of these flavors, but not this way. Not this way. Like you could take, I, I would say maybe like a like a Glendronach, like the twelve year. And if you just kind of cranked up certain things on that, here you are. But yeah. like this, this is pretty unique. The reason why I couldn't give it a ten is because, ironically, all, some of the other Aberlour releases. That was a reason. Fair enough. Yeah. All right, guys. Now we will move on to drinkability, which <laughs> I originally had at a nine, but I ended up at an eight. I give it an eight as well. I give it a nine. And I, I started at an eight, but I went up because went up. I actually drink this a lot. Mm. Um, when I'm thinking about like I don't want I don't want a scotch, and, but I don't want a bourbon. Like this is where I go. You know what it was though. Like I, my, uh, I first wrote down a nine because I wanted another sip immediately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But on like the second or third sip, I was like, wait, I'm getting a bit too much of that ethanol hit. Yep. Mm -hmm. I need to slow exactly. it down. It, it just takes a little bit off that edge for me, but exactly. I'm, I was close to a nine, but I, I don't know. And I to be honest, it wasn't consistent for me. Like I would, uh, every now and then I get the ethanol hit yeah. and then, you know, so it wasn't Sometimes that it consistent. Wasn't yeah, it wasn't there, which made it really pleasant, but I don't know. That's why it's I still high marks. I'll keep yeah. my score for the market correction. <laughs> All right, let's move <laughs> on to aesthetics. Uh, for some reason, I, I feel like this bottle is kind of uninteresting. I give it a three. Really? I give it a four. What scotch comes because in a bottle like this? Exactly. Look at this design. I don't understand. Like, where's, where's, the, where's the can? I mean, it's not perfect. There's so much scotch but, out there, guys. But look everything at the cylinder. Comes, everything Damn comes it. in a look cylinder. Look at the cylinder. It's everything comes texture. in a cylinder. Every scotch comes size. in a cylinder. But look at this not size. Not like this. And not the stout. Look at that. No, you Come get on. the regular. Where's okay. the other stuff? Guys, yeah. an average is a 2.5. Look at the mouth of that bottle. Yeah, look at that neck. It's not bad. It's thick. Blow me away. I don't know. 
right. It's a little too nondescript. The bottle itself is just a little this too This is not nondescript. No, no. Oh my no. god. You can you can identify this. Mm -hmm. It is it is come on, it's five out of five. Five out of five. It's not perfect. It is not a regular four, four. scotch bottle. It is not a regular scotch bottle. Come it's on. Middle of the road it's is a perfect. two point five technically. Look at the So you are above the middle of the road. Look at the scotch. But that's why I, I stuck at a four. I think it's I think it's a spring bank. If you you know what, I would have I would have accepted that if you, if you said, Oh yeah, spring bank or something like that. You know, like that. I do not it's, accept your answer. <laughs> that's what Dylan always says. <laughs> okay guys, we gotta move on. Let's get to value again. <laughs> price has gone up. Yeah. We're talking 90, 80, 90 bucks. Three for me. Three. Yeah, I mean, I had it at a four. Um, mm -mm. I could be convinced to go down. Let me let me justify why it's above a three. I think there's value in this as a liaison between a scotch and bourbon. And therefore, it has a utility that is beyond most other scotch. Mm. I this you. is where I would say, if you are an avid bourbon drinker who never touched scotch, and they said, hey, like, can you recommend something that, you know, I could buy that might... By far. This is the bourbon for scotch drinkers. Right. Sorry. This is the scotch, scotch for, bourbon, for bourbon drinkers. So that's why, that's why I thought the value of this bottle goes up. But... Because you have to look for this and you will pay for it. In the grand scheme, let's But you got to look for this. Think about the 15-year-old, 18-year-old scotch there. you can get for this price range. Not mm -hmm. with this flavor profile. That yeah, is think, a liaison think, between think the two. Glendronach 15. Think Glenlivet 18. More, it, it leans 18. more toward traditional I scotch know, sherry. But you have to factor it all in. It's no. hard. No, I, I think this is this is more toward the bourbon drinker than what you normally I see. I agree. Like if you if somebody says, "Look, I don't want anything like bourbon. What I want is I want quintessential scotch. Well, let's put it this way. Show me scotch. I mean, like let's I, put it I you know, for, rattle a, off. For, for a bourbon drinker, sure, this is easily a four, maybe even a five. In the grand scheme of scotch, I do think it's a little bit closer to a three. No, I think I it's agree. more than. I, I'm, well, I'm keeping it up. Agree to disagree. Yeah, I will mark um, it correct for that. No, you're not. <laughs> so let's, taste, let's taste one more time. <laughs> he finished it. See? What's his drinkability there? What? Eight. Come on. You yeah, finished that's it. a great score. You act like that's just so low, dude. That's dude, a great score, I think score, you need to guys. adjust the, I don't think uh, I'm going to adjust. I enjoy the flavor. It. I might adjust on flavor. I think you should go up a... Here. I might nice. need another swear. Mine's wow. opened up. Try it. With the spit. No, I don't backwash at all. I, I, yeah, I don't. I think eighteen flavors solid. I, I you, sixteen's way too low. Okay. All right. I will go up to seventeen. There you go. On flavor. Okay. You should mention that because this is the hardest spirits competition in the world. We round down. We average yeah. our scores and round down. So. Is it hard because of my market correction? Uh, well, that too. But let's <laughs> let's uh, let's get our scores because we did have a little bit of a change from when we mentioned them earlier. I. Uh, had, I still have an 84. <laughs> so you didn't have a change. <laughs> I have a 79. Oh, well, I got him at 85. Which gives us our Ooh. official Curiosity Ooh. Public Ultimate Spirits Competition score for Abelor Abuna. A very solid gold at 82. Ooh. Wow. Yeah, 82 Not points. enough to get on the board? Six. No, not enough to get not on the board. Wow. Our, the leaderboard is, is at 85 and up. up. Yeah, we our leaderboard's up there now. Wow. Yeah. Um, but a very solid show, uh, showing, a gold Definitely. medal, well-deserved gold medal in my book. Any closing thoughts, guys? Again, liaison. Yeah, great one for bourbon drinkers. I think we got to reiterate that. we got a lot of bourbon fans that watch our channel. Do yourself a favor. Give this a try if you can have a chance. Mm -hmm. Tell us in the comments below what you guys think. Give us a thumbs up if you like this episode. Hit that subscribe button for more videos from Curiosity Public. Please consider joining Curiosity Private if you want to help the channel out. Check out our podcast and all the major podcast platforms out there. As always, stay safe, stay healthy. Stay curious. Sherry butt. You're a sherry butt.